In the spring of 2017, Hoover, Roosevelt, and Denman Middle Schools were named as Digital Promise Verizon Innovative Learning Schools. So we were the recipients of a two-year grant that was awarded to us um, through dis and, and written on our behalf through the district's Department of Technology. And the grant had goals that were fourfold. So it was to, one, increase tech proficiency for teachers and students, two, increase student engagement through technology, three, increase interest in STEM field in general and also its careers, and four, to increase student achievement by learning to leverage technology in ways that would directly impact student achievement. So we set out our work in reaching these goals and starting with our 2016-17 school year. I can tell you now that our accomplishments are many. Um, now in our third year, since the grant actually was extended in a third year, all three schools can confidently say that we have full integration of technology across all content areas at our schools. We've been able to eliminate the digital divide with resources to this grant by providing access not just at school, but then at home for our students. And finally, all three of our school sites have been able to align professional development, have dedicated coaches to support curricular development utilizing the technology, and then we've also developed an emerging teacher leadership team to support the staff's technology across content areas. Last spring, 70% of our teachers stated that they felt they effectively used iPads to accomplish instructional objectives. And most importantly, nearly 80% of our teachers felt strongly engaged with the professional development. We wanted to take the skills that we developed amongst our three staffs and find a way to use them that would support teacher development and project-based learning experiences for our students, increase personalized learning options for students, support staff and design project-based assessments that would support all children in their learning, and support our communities both teachers and students as we moved into the middle school redesign. Our three schools developed a shared challenge question. How might we design technology-enabled learning experiences that joyfully engage students with voice and choice while demonstrating understanding to their community? So all three of our schools engaged in the design process together. Some of the ways, some of the many things that we did uh, in the discovery phase were create a student survey that got 350 responses from students across all three campuses about their learning and their experience and engagement with the curriculum that they were, they were taught. At Hoover, we conducted a discussion with alum to find out what their middle school takeaways were. And we discovered a lot in that process. One of the insights was that one third of our students felt that they had never been allowed to make a decision in what they were learning in school. That 64% of students wanted to engage with the content that we were teaching in some hands-on way. And that 31% of the students felt their least preferred way of displaying knowledge was through a test. Okay, so to start off, um, we really just wanted to get some feedback from our students. So initially, we sent out student surveys to kind of get an um, idea of what, where students think they learn best. So what we got an overwhelming response was that students really want voice and choice in the classroom. So what that meant is that they wanted choices in the way that they could learn, and also they wanted to be able to have some say in what they were learning about. So for us, we took this and we used this into our design feature. We also um, got feedback that students really wanted um, technology used in the classroom. The classrooms that they really enjoyed being in the most was the teachers in the classrooms where they were using tech um, on a weekly or day-to-day -day basis. So our solution that we're going to present to you, it comes in sort of three design phases. One is, is student-centered. Secondly, it's interdisciplinary and theme-based. And the third is that it ends up in a student showcase where they have chosen how they want to present their work. Sorry? The video showcases some of the things that are already happening at Denman right now this year. Projects I've done is I've taken a protest 
song from like the 1900s and I um, edited it to make kind of a B-roll footage with it. It's very fun because you get to cut the clips and make it timed perfectly. So design feature number one is all about student-centered project. So they'll choose a uh, project. Uh, they will be located in a particular dedicated space and teachers will move in and out throughout the day. We're going to target them being in the classrooms for their four curriculums. Um, so the, the um, we're going to target the eighth grade and to begin with the social studies teachers will help them uh, go through a designing of their uh, choice uh, and what their essential question is. Uh, we need to uh, help the um, teachers uh, have planning time and uh, do some more work with project-based learning. Uh, we, uh, the teachers will plan for two months. Uh, the eighth graders will be involved in this project-based learning for two weeks and then uh, the showcase at the end. So design feature two. So as we all talk about interdisciplinary learning, project-based learning, personalized learning, all these sort of things. Um, Sounds pretty much impossible when you have 140, 150 students a year. So it really needs to be a team effort. So first and foremost, we really want to start forming a culture around this. And we want to start really housing our, our like teachers our, into teams, into houses, into like interdisciplinary teams where we can create, we have common planning time, we can create common rubrics, where we can have, we can build out portfolios and we can like all sort of come together to think about what we need to do together as teams. So, um, one of the main things that I've seen like really work, and you know, I'm, I'm a second year teacher, but I've had the ability to work with like a 30 year teacher this year in a STEAM class. That first one where we were building trebuchets and all this kind of stuff, that was a result of us being able to collaborate with math and science together, and we're able to like track the data in Google Sheets and be able to do all sorts of other things. When you're able to have carve that amount of time out, you're actually able to do much more robust projects. So. We need, well, this first project in the, in the spring is just going to be a pilot where we're building out the rubrics that we need as, a, as an interdisciplinary teams, and we are kind of proving that common planning time will allow us to actually get towards some of these goals. Um, so that's that. In design feature three, uh, here we're leveraging other work that we're already doing, creating community-wide student presentations, such as STEAM night and history night. and we're adding the components of cross-curricular connections, student choice, and opportunities for digital publication. And this will also guide us toward building digital student portfolios. Our near-term hopes are that um, student community engagement, we're hoping that families and our community partners are able to come and support and celebrate our young intellectuals. Um, we want to make sure that we're developing rubrics for interdisciplinary projects, making sure that we're able to clearly define what it means to be a Denman scholar and what it means to be high school ready. So taking a very close look at what skills should our students be able to walk out of our school with. Um, making sure that we're able to sort of re-envision what a typical school day and what the spaces should be like in order to support this type of learning. Our long-term goals, um, we want to make sure that we're developing PBL units and protocols for all grade levels, making sure that we are building out rigor at all grade levels. Making sure that we are developing equity-based, culturally relevant learning experiences, making sure that the things that we're teaching in our classes speak to the lived realities of our students and their interests, and then also focusing on the long-term development of school-wide cultural norms that support personalized learning. So making sure that we have this culture where students are able to advocate for themselves and that we speak directly to their, or we teach in ways that speak directly to their needs. Um, ways that we'll measure our outcomes are through qualitative and quantitative means. Uh, we want to make sure that we capture the story through student teacher video interviews, taking a closer look at the topics that students choose in their projects, and also capturing a lot of uh, classroom footage. Quantitatively, we want to make sure that we're collecting data through surveys, and make sure we're taking a look at how our students perform on the actual uh, project. And again, comparing it against um, our idea of stu our students high school ready, and also making sure it falls in line with whether or not our students are fall in line with the 2025 graduate profile. So in summary, the timeline is in January, the social studies teachers will help students uh, develop essential questions and also give them instructions on how to do projects. Uh, in February through March, the teachers will get uh, project-based learning instruction, build rubrics, and start working on the curriculum. 
after testing in April, the eighth graders will be on a um, different schedule and they will be in different groupings and teachers will be uh, going in and out of the classroom. And then in uh, May, the beginning of May, there will be a showcase. And then in August, we will come back together to uh, analyze, evaluate, and um, do it again. And maybe open it up to the whole school if we can. Thank you, Evan.